Ladies and gentlemen, Behind the Line proudly presents to you another exciting edition of The Woke! Turning on The Woke! This episode is brought to you by Triple B, the Biden Bashing Brigade. Are you a proud parishioner of Woke United Methodist who is disenfranchised with our fearless leader? Have you come to the harsh realization that you're following a commander who relies on depends instead of being relied upon? If you are tired of this obvious charade, join the Biden Bashing Brigade. Triple B offers a wide variety of platforms to express your outrage towards the Biden family. MSNBC, Facebook, Twitter, CNN, through our combined efforts, we can get rid of Johnny Biden. Join us today at TripleB.com. Oh, the Civil War continues at Woke United Methodist, and the audience is turning against MSNBC. I told you. I told you this was coming. I told you this was going to happen. I just didn't know at the time that it was going to happen to the entire network. Several weeks ago, we did a ratings update on our bundle of joy, the Wicked Weave of the Woke, Joy Reid. I believe this was sometime around the middle of June. When I did this update, I told you guys that Joy Reid was getting dangerously close to failing to eclipse 1 million viewers in prime time, and it wouldn't surprise me if she achieved this level of embarrassing failure by July. <laughs> As it turns out, our bundle of joy, she is an ambitious failure. She is working hard to be nominated for the upcoming second annual Huge Embarrassing Failure Awards. Second quarter of 2024, Joy Reid, she was averaging 1.3 million viewers. Since the middle of June, the Wicked Weave, she has lost almost 300,000 viewers with almost half of her episodes failing to eclipse a million viewers. Question is, why? What happened? In the middle of an election year, how can Joy Reid's ratings be rapidly declining? Are people tired of listening to fabricated stories of mythical racism? Are they exhausted from years of being lectured by an angry, bitter bundle of joy? Perhaps viewers got tired of watching Joy Reid riding her broom around the studio. Now, all those excuses... They would be legitimate if these ratings declines were only affecting Joy Reid. The problem for MSNBC, the entire network is tanking. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. Over the last couple of years, CNN, it has been the premier huge embarrassing failure in cable news. The CNN Titanic hit the iceberg years ago, and they have been slowly sinking to the bottom of the woke sea ever since. But there's a huge difference. Huge difference. Between the rating struggles at CNN and the tanking ratings at MSNBC, at least CNN has an excuse they have no stars. I mean, who in the hell is rushing home from work to listen to the monotone voice of the painfully boring, rarely smiling Caitlin Collins? Katie Roo! Katie Roo! Who is setting their DVR to record Wolf Blitzer? Woof, woof, woof! If Andy Cooper's ratings fall any lower, he's going to be competing with Andy Cohen, the dude who interviews desperate housewives who refer to themselves as Bravo Liberties. Uh, yeah, you can call yourself whatever you want. The rest of us refer to you as anonymous or irrelevant. At least CNN can blame their lack of star power for their low ratings. What is MSNBC's excuse? We are in the middle of an election year. This is the time when ratings are supposed to go up. Yet somehow, ratings at MSNBC have declined 30%. Second quarter of 2024, MSNBC averaged 810,000 viewers throughout the day. Through the first week of July, that number has fallen to a cool 569,000. That is their lowest average of the year. And to my knowledge... One of their lowest averages in years. Let me put this in perspective for you. CNN, they averaged 618,000 viewers in the second quarter of the year, which means MSNBC is no longer competing with Fox News. They are now competing with CNN, whose only competition over the last few years has been News Nation, home of Chris Cuomo. Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. 
To make matters worse, MSNBC, they average just 56,000 viewers in the 25 to 54 demo. Pat McAfee, host of the least watched show at the Worldwide Leader in Woke. ESPN, they can broadcast the hot dog eating contest where grown men are consuming an abundance of wiener and the audience will be 10 times the size of Pat McAfee's. The only thing keeping Pat McAfee employed at ESPN, he is a huge draw in the key demos. MSNBC averages 56,000 in the demo. Pat McAfee, he easily doubles that number. That's how bad things have gotten at MSNBC. The question is, why? What the hell happened? This is a network that easily averages over a million viewers every night in prime time. How can they go from the pinnacle of cable news to working overtime polishing the turd with CNN? No one knows for sure, but I think it's one of two things or a combination of both. Number one, MSNBC is the latest victim of the Biden specialty. Since the debate, instead of MSNBC airing nonstop coverage of the Trumper, who is a proven ratings draw, MSNBC, they have been providing their dwindling audience with nonstop coverage of Johnny B. Biden, a proven failure in every aspect. I keep coming back to this because it applies to any conversation we have about John Biden. But years ago, Barry Obama, He said that John Biden has this unique ability to fuck everything up. With weeks of nonstop coverage of Johnny B, MSNBC, they are finding that out the hard way. And number two, perhaps viewers at MSNBC are tired of watching this, what I'm about to show you. Perhaps viewers at MSNBC are tired of being exposed to propaganda. Maybe, just maybe. People who watch MSNBC have finally figured out they're being lied to. Yesterday, Little Red Riding Hood, Jen Psaki. You know, I wonder if she's related to Oroku Saki, better known as Master Shredder from the Ninja Turtles. It is entirely possible that Jenny P is related to the Master Shredder. Maybe he is helping them shred ratings at MSNBC. But anyway, Jen Psaki, she took a break yesterday from fighting Donatello to spread propaganda on social media. She was trying to elevate cackling Cam Harris as a viable candidate to be president. Little Red knows that Cam Harris is as popular as Febreze on The View. The Yentas, they don't want you masking the smell of the boodle breeze with a pleasant aroma of winter mist. When the whoopee cushion hikes her leg, they want the full experience of her toxic flatulence. Jen Psaki, she was trying to convince people that Cam Harris is brilliant. <laughs> According to Jen Psaki, there is a reason that you think Cam Harris resides at the bottom of the intelligence curve. It's not her unique ability to speak for five minutes without saying a damn thing. It's not her fascination with school buses. According to Jenny P., The reason you think Cam Harris is what the French like to call laissez-compétent is because America is a country plagued with mythical racism and mythical misogyny. Watch for yourself. She is like, in my view, an undervalued talent. Um, She's a very fierce communicator, but there is a character out there. There is, it's almost like public opinion hasn't caught up with what she is doing out there. And also, we live in a country that is sexist and racist. Jen Psaki is doing the same thing with Cam Harris that she did for years with Johnny B. Biden. Jen Psaki thinks you're stupid. She is telling you, do not believe your own eyes. Your eyes might be telling you that Cam Harris is a failed contestant on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? But the false narrative is, Cam is a Harvard scholar. She received a PhD in gender metamorphosis studying under the tutelage of the premier pretend doctor, Jill Biden. Jen Psaki's not the only one at MSNBC pushing propaganda to an audience of none. Our bundle of joy, she was busy yesterday showcasing her fear of the orange man. While Jen Psaki was trying to convince you that Cam Harris was the bastion of book smarts, Joy Reid, she was explaining her fear of the orange man along with her fear of the white man. Watch for yourself. 
the only thing that matters in this election is keeping Donald Trump and Project 2025 out of power, keeping that in, in, insane ideology of white Christian nationalism and white supremacy and white male Christian dominance out of power. That's all that matters. I genuinely don't care who the Democratic nominee is, and I'm being real. I don't care. If it's Biden, fine. If it's Kamala Harris, fabulous. Either one, I don't care. Or if you, you wanna parachute somebody else in and they not him, they not the orange one, they not the one who quotes Hitler, fine, put him in, I don't care. Because all that matters, I'm gonna say this to y'all again, all that matters in this upcoming election is that you keep that man and that Project 2025 plan out of power. Is it any wonder, is it any wonder why hundreds of thousands of people have turned off this garbage? I trimmed that clip down, but Joy Reid, she spoke for over three minutes, repeating the same false narrative over and over and over. She is trying to scare you into voting for anyone other than the Trumper. But you know who's really afraid? You know who's actually living in fear? You know who is living a life of misery? Joy Reid. People who are scared, people who are miserable, they spread their fear and misery to others. You know why Joy Reid is so afraid of what she calls white Christian nationalism? You know why she keeps pushing the false narrative of white supremacy? Joy Reid has been talking about white supremacy with the Trumper for years now, and in all that time, she has never provided a shred of evidence. Hell, they have a relative of Master Shredder working at MSNBC, and they still can't find a single shred of evidence of white supremacy. You know why Joy Reid is pretending to be afraid of the white man? <laughs> the truth is... Her fear has nothing to do with these fairy tales that she's creating. What Joy Reid is actually afraid of is the elimination of diversity, equity, and inclusion. She's afraid networks like MSNBC are going to go back to the practice of hiring people based on qualifications and merit instead of hiring people based on woke quotas. Because Joy Reid knows if that happens, she might be out of work. Those millions of dollars she collects every year in woke welfare, gone. Maybe Joy Reid is afraid of corporations realizing that hiring people based on race and gender instead of qualifications and merit ain't such a good idea. They are doing everything they can to convince you not to vote for the Trumper. He's a threat to democracy. Cam Harris is brilliant. Trump is a felon. Or is bad? Strategy worked in 2020, but there's a difference between now and 2020. Back then, people were actually watching. The media had more influence. Ratings are not the only thing declining today in the mainstream media. Influence is rapidly declining as well. But give me your thoughts on this. Ratings at MSNBC crashed to record lows for 2024. In the middle of an election year, MSNBC is struggling to retain their audience. Jory Reid is failing to eclipse 1 million viewers in prime time. On June 30th, Jen Psaki, she interviewed Nancy Pelosi, 769,000 viewers. Rachel Maddow, also known as Maddow Monday, since that's the only day of the week she chooses to work. Rachel Maddow, she was pulling almost 3 million viewers this time last year. Last Monday night, 1.5 million. Why? Why? Why are ratings crashing at MSNBC? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com and I'll see you guys later.